Experiment 3 in Chem 1211 is titled Stoichiometry Challenge Copper Compounds, and the goal of this experiment is to carry out a series of reactions involving copper metal and copper 2, eventually going all the way from copper metal back to copper metal through a series of five reactions. For each reaction, we'll plan using the tools of stoichiometry to ensure that reactants are added in the right ratios and the reactions proceed as we'd like them to, and we'll evaluate percent yield once we get back to copper at the end of the process. So to kick off this experiment, we'll just begin with copper metal in the form of copper wire, and subject it to five reactions that ultimately form a cycle coming back to copper metal at the end. The first reaction involves the conversion of copper zero, copper metal, to copper two nitrate, CuNO3. Two, and we'll observe this as a blue solution, so the brown wire will dissolve in nitric acid and become blue. Subsequently, we'll use sodium hydroxide to convert copper 2 nitrate to copper 2 hydroxide, which is a blue solid that will precipitate out because the hydroxide is not soluble in water. Subsequently, we'll heat that solid to form a black powder, copper 2 oxide, and then we'll subject the copper 2 oxide to treatment with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, to form H2O and copper 2 sulfate, CuSO4, which again, like we did for the copper 2 nitrate, we'll observe this as a blue solution. Finally, we'll treat the copper 2 sulfate with zinc metal, which is a reducing agent that can convert the copper 2 back to copper metal. And presumably at the end of this cycle, if everything goes according to plan and all the reactions go ideally, we should end up with the same quantity of copper metal that we started with. Throughout this experiment, we'll be interested in questions of stoichiometry. And so we'll be interested in thought processes like, if we start with 0.5 grams of copper wire, how much nitric acid do we need to treat that copper wire with to fully react it? We may also be interested in amounts of product, so how much copper 2 nitrate can we expect if all of that 0.5 grams of copper metal is fully reacted? These are questions of stoichiometry, and the tools of stoichiometry, specifically molar mass and molar ratios, are going to be really important in this experiment for doing the calculations properly. So in the laboratory, we'll work almost exclusively with mass and volume. And a goal, in terms of these calculations, is often to convert the mass or volume to moles. For mass, we use the molar mass, a ratio of grams to moles, to do this conversion. We might also be interested in converting from moles of one substance to moles of another, say moles of a reactant to moles of a product. And that's done using a mole-to-mole -mole ratio of the two substances, so moles of copper, say, to moles of copper nitrate. These so-called molar ratios come from the balanced chemical equations for each process, and so this highlights the importance of balancing and being able to balance and work with balanced equations to stoichiometry calculations in this lab. Let's take a closer look now at step B, which involves the conversion of copper nitrate to copper hydroxide, and look at how some of these stoichiometry calculations play out in practice. So in part B of the experiment, we'll react the copper nitrate solution with sodium hydroxide to form a copper hydroxide precipitate and aqueous sodium nitrate. An unbalanced equation is shown here in black, and let's balance this equation really quickly. We're going to need the balanced equation to extract the molar ratios that allow us to convert from moles of one substance to moles of another. So to begin, we can notice that there are two nitrates within copper nitrate on the reactant side, but there's only one nitrate within NaNO3 on the product side, and so we need to add a coefficient of two to sodium nitrate to balance the nitrate ions. Similarly, we see that there are two hydroxides within copper hydroxide on the product side, but there's only one hydroxide within NaOH, sodium hydroxide, on the left-hand side, and so we need to add a coefficient of two in front of the NaOH to account for both hydroxides on the right-hand side of the equation. And now we're fully balanced, and one way to check this is just to glance quickly at the sodiums. There are two sodiums on the reactant side, and there are two sodiums on the product side. So sodium is balanced, nitrate is balanced, hydroxide is balanced, and copper is balanced. There's one copper atom on each side of the equation. Now let's imagine that we started with 1.48 grams of copper nitrate. Now in practice, you'll have this in solution, so you won't know exactly the mass of the copper nitrate you've got, but it will be in the vicinity, if the reaction went well, of 1.4 to maybe 1.3 grams. 
what we want to know is how much sodium hydroxide do we need to react fully with the 1.48 grams of copper nitrate that came out of part A, that were the products of the part A reaction. We're working with a three molar solution of sodium hydroxide, and that means there are three moles of NaOH per liter of solution. To get started with this, a good first step in almost every stoichiometry problem is to get yourself out of mass and volume land and get all quantities where possible to moles. So the known quantity here is the mass of copper nitrate. And let's convert that to moles as a first step. The idea here is to divide by the molar mass or multiply by one mole per 187.6 grams. That's the molar mass of copper nitrate. And that gets us to 7.87 times 10 to the negative third moles of copper nitrate. So this is essentially the number of copper nitrate molecules that we have in solution corresponding to that mass of 1.48 grams. Our goal ultimately is to get back to a volume of NaOH and the concentration shows us that that can be used to convert from moles to volume. So backing up a step from that we can say we need to get the moles of NaOH that are necessary. And to do this conversion we can use the molar ratio of sodium hydroxide to copper nitrate that comes out of the balanced equation. Specifically, if we look at the balanced equation, there are two moles of NaOH that react for every one mole of copper nitrate that reacts. Multiplying by this molar ratio cancels out the units of moles of copper nitrate, leaves us only with units of moles of sodium hydroxide, and the value here is 1.57 times 10 to the negative 2. As a final step, we can use the molarity, 3 moles per liter, to convert this number of moles back to a volume. So we can multiply by 1,000 milliliters, or one liter, divided by three moles, which is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution that was given at the outset. So we need about five milliliters of sodium hydroxide to fully react with the copper nitrate in solution after part A. To review the general process again, in the first step, we divided by molar mass, and this was getting out of mass land. Almost all of our measurements in the laboratory will be either mass or volume, but as we see from the molar ratio, it's convenient to work with moles when we're dealing with converting from one substance to another, so getting out of mass land, as I like to call it, is key. In the next step, we use the molar ratio to convert moles of one substance to moles of another, and then finally, we divided by the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution to get back to a volume. In a lot of cases, if you're dealing with solids and solids, you'll multiply by the molar mass here to get back to a mass in grams. The key player in all of this really is the balanced chemical equation. The whole process hinges on having that balanced chemical equation in hand because that's where the molar ratio comes from in the second step. All of the other calculations in this experiment will be in the same spirit as the calculation you see here, going from mass or volume of one substance or one solution to a mass or volume of another reactant or a product. And the basic process of dividing by a molar mass or multiplying by a molarity, then using a molar ratio, and finally dividing by molarity or multiplying by molar mass to get back to volume or mass respectively, is going to show up in multiple problems throughout this experiment.